Formula One is currently in Japan for the 200 mile per hour version of Takeshi's Castle, but the firestorm that kicked off last weekend at the Singapore Grand Prix is still raging. It wasn't the five safety cars or the delayed start because of the rain or Max Verstappen being a dum-dum, Lewis Hamilton being a dum-dum, Nicholas Latifi being Nicholas Latifi, George Russell trying to kill Mick Schumacher and then being a real Tory bastard on the radio. Crikey. Oh, crikey. Pipe down, Boris. The Singapore Grand Prix absolutely slapped my tits, but nobody's talking about any of that because of the cost cap and scandal. Oh yes, they've got a new name. First, it was Mickey Mouse World Champion, my personal favourite. Then it was Human Error Champion. Now it's Cost Capen, or Cost Cap Stappen. They can't figure out which one. Basically, here's how things unfolded. On Friday, a rumour spread around the paddock that Simon Lazenby likes to get pissed on. A rumour spread around the paddock that two teams have been spending hella stacks last season and broke the cost cap of $145 million. One of the teams is Red Bull and the other is Aston Martin. Everybody's focusing on Red Bull, but nobody's talking about how Aston Martin might have broken the cost cap, spent hella stacks and still managed to build this piece of shit. The next day, which was Saturday, Toto Wolf went on Sky Sports F1 running his big fat dirty mouth, throwing accusations around, which apparently we're allowed to do now, just accuse a team of anything with no real evidence. That's like me saying Mercedes used to build cars for Adolf Hitler. Oh wait, the next day, which was Sunday, Christian Horner went on Sky Sports F1 running his big fat dirty mouth, saying that he was hella pissed off that Toto Wolf said all of those things and that he would take legal action against Toto unless he took them back and apologised. And obviously, F1 Twitter went apocalyptic. Even though nothing has been confirmed yet, Team LH were having a field day because all they needed was half a rumour and they've decided that Red Bull are running drugs into America like Pablo Escobar and Helmut Marko is walking around with money strapped to his tits like Margot Robbie in The Wolf of Wall Street. Things were getting so out of control, the FIA themselves released a statement telling everybody to shut the f*** up and wait for the documents. So, everybody shut the f*** up and waited patiently for the documents. Ha 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 ha! Wrong. Everybody kept on talking shite, Christian Horner's nerve intensified, and in the middle of all of it there was a Grand Prix that nobody even noticed. Then it was Monday, and the FIA said they would release the documents on Wednesday, so Team LH spent the next two days edging themselves, waiting for the big finish on Wednesday. And then on Wednesday, everybody turned their notifications on for the FIA Twitter account, waiting for the bombshell to drop. And then, nothing. They tweeted about solar panels. Greta Thunberg intensifies, but where are the f documents? Spoiler alert. They never even arrived. They built up all that tension and had the eyes of the world upon them for a deadline they set themselves and then said, yeah, we're just going to release the documents on Monday. That's disgusting. Disgusting! So a rumour that had no evidence yet started a shitstorm on the mainstream media, causing five straight days of arguments between team principals, Armageddon on social media, and at the end of all of it, nobody learned anything. Well done, the system works. So what's all the fuss about? Is it even that serious? Yeah, it's pretty serious. Let's get a few things on the table. So initially, the rumour was Aston Martin had overspent by less than 5% and Red Bull had overspent by more than 5%. That matters a lot because on this list of potential ball punches, if you overspend by 5%, you could be excluded from the championship. That's why Team LH was so hard, because this is their opportunity to get back the stolen world championship. All that hard work Michael Massey put in, down the toilet. However, another report suggested Red Bull would escape severe punishment because they only overspent by a million pounds, not the 10 million pounds initially suggested. See, this is where I have a problem with this. They're saying... A minor breach is anything up to 5%. 5% 5 of 145 million stacks is 7.25 million stacks. How the f*** is that a minor breach? That's so much money. That's almost enough to buy an official Ferrari cap. My opinion, and that's the only thing that matters in any of this, my opinion is that if a team has overspent by a penny, 
They should be thrown in jail, disqualified from the championship and sent to hell because you can't give these dirty F1 teams room to breathe. You, you know they say that if you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. It's more like if you tell them they can just stick the tip in, they'll go full shaft plus the bollocks. Mate, you've got to be... There has to be a hard line that cannot be crossed. For example, last year at the Brazilian Grand Prix, Lewis Hamilton was disqualified from qualifying because the gap in his DRS was 0.2 millimetres bigger than it should have been. Something that would have given him no advantage and was probably caused by Max Verstappen fucking with it, let's be honest. The FIA disqualified Lewis and threw him into oblivion otherwise known as the back of the grid. This is what I'm talking about. A tiny, tiny breach of the regulations and you get f that's the way it should be. People need to be afraid of breaking the rules. Fear is the only thing that motivates people to do anything. Why do you think I'm sat here right now? Because I'm afraid of getting a real job. I don't want to do this. You, you think I want to be sat in the garage screaming into my iPhone? I hate myself. <sighs> So the FIA are releasing the documents on Monday after the Japanese Grand Prix and I haven't decided who I'm rooting for yet. I'm kind of torn because on one hand, as a closeted Ferrari simp, and somebody that likes to watch the world burn, the idea that they could disqualify Red Bull from the championship and the nuclear fallout that would happen after that is kind of exciting to me. But then on the other hand, because this involves Team LH and they are the most insufferable people in the world, I don't want them to get what they want. So as much as I want everything to descend into anarchy and chaos, I also don't want them to be happy. You can see my turmoil. Another thing I wanted to mention is that million pounds that Red Bull are rumoured to have gone over, surely that barely covers the cost of Mercedes terrorism last year. I mean, cops, that's probably a million. And then Bottas in uh, the Hungarian Grand Prix. I'm sure there is a bit in the regulations about that, but I didn't read them because I don't care. Now let's get to the Q&A. I asked all of the degenerate scumbags that follow my channel if they had any questions, and there's like 130... So I'll pick a few and then we'll all go back to our miserable lives. If you could bring back any F1 team and two drivers, what and who would it be? Kimi Raikkonen, obviously. James Hunt, driving for Jordan. F yes, there would not be a dry minge in the grandstands. Next question. If you had to fight either Hamilton or Verstappen, who would you fight? That's tricky because Hamilton is ripped, but he's a vegan. So all you'd have to do is throw a joint of gammon at his head. Whereas Verstappen, he's not as shredded. He's kind of doughy, but the guy is a psycho. Like, you've seen his eyes in the interviews. He's just dead. Like, Max Verstappen does not exist. There is no personality. Do you, do you have any idea how much childhood trauma it takes to be as talented as Max Verstappen? We've all heard the stories. Jos Verstappen, every time Max finished second in a go-kart race, Jos Verstappen's girlfriend ended up in the stratosphere. That's what you don't get to that level by encouragement. Right, and this is my point. A guy like Verstappen, if he wasn't driving a Formula One car, there would be 50 bodies underneath the floorboards in his kitchen. So I would fight Lewis, but I would cover my body in Bovril and slices of bacon so that he'd run away and hide. If you could push Paul DeResta off a high building, which building would it be? I, do I don't hate Paul DeResta. I just hate the way that he speaks and everything that he says, and fundamentally who he is as a person. And his head is way too big for his body, have you noticed? But, I, you know I'm just being silly, I would never push him off a building, although, hypothetically, if the two of us were on the top of the Eiffel Tower, there would be a flying Scotsman. But, he'd find a way to survive, he'd... He would use his gigantic head to break the fall. There would be a crater the size of a football stadium in downtown Paris if Paul DeResta fell off the top of the Eiffel Tower.
No question, I just think Lance Stroll has the IQ of a brick. <laughs> I, I don't know, I think bricks are kind of useful. What is your favourite swear word that isn't considered racist, sexist, able... Well, they're all the best ones. Favourite swear word... Bastard. Mainstream media doing hit pieces against Red Bull. Talk about British media pandering to LH and spinning narratives against Red Bull. I think I said this in the last video. I honestly don't believe the mainstream media is biased. I think they're dumb. You know, like uh, the Italian Grand Prix, the reason they didn't cover all the bad fan experiences like the Red Bull fans being harassed for wearing Red Bull merchandise and the leg brace lady who was eaten by wild dogs... They were too busy talking about the Queen, and this is my point. It can seem suspicious when they ignore that, but then talk about all the other abuse. But they are really just covering whatever the main story is, even if the main story is complete bollocks. And that's the other point, isn't it? Well, like, all right, if they're going to talk about a rumour, well, what do they mean, a rumour? Like, who started it and where did it come from? And surely... If Mercedes have got people giving them inside information about the financial records of another team, is that not bang out of order as well? And then if they're going to talk about a rumour on the mainstream media, where do they draw the line at a rumour? Like, if there was something going round about Toto Wolf likes to shit the bed on purpose, are they going to talk about that in the pre-show? Yeah, they probably would actually, wouldn't they? If you had to absolutely blow one of the drivers to test drive an F1 car, who would you blow and why? What is wrong with you people? If I had to blow... <sighs> Fuck. Brendan Hartley, because he's definitely got a minge. This isn't a funny one, I'm just genuinely interested in your opinion of Ted Kravitz. I am amused by him and his style. My wife cannot stand him and thinks he's annoying, clueless ape of a man. You're both kind of right. Ted Kravitz is a legend, but... He's also kind of a spaz. I mean, Ted Kravitz and Martin Brundle are the only two pillars of strength holding up Sky Sports F1 at the moment. Sky Sports F1 has just signed like a new 100-year deal to keep covering Formula 1. And they've got a 1,000 people on the payroll. All of them, apart from those two, are terrible. So yeah, Ted Kravitz, I like him. Martin Brundle is mint. But for me, the best person to ever commentate on F1 is James Allen. You kids will never have heard of James Allen. So, I'll, do you know what? I'll find some footage of James Allen and I'll, I'll put it in right now. And he's still seven one hundredths of a second ahead of Michael Schumacher. Through the Ascari chicane, the temperature builds. The BMW engine rises to over 19,000 RPM, 930 horsepower, hurling him down the straight. One corner to go for Juan Pablo Montoya in front of the Ferrari fans, the Tifosi here at Monza. Can he snatch pole position? He's driving for the line. Has he done it? Has he done it? No! He's five one hundredths of a second off Michael Schumacher's pace. And what a stunning qualifying session here at Monza. He did get a bit carried away sometimes. James Hunt also did some commentary after he retired. Not a lot of people know that. In fact, James Hunt and Murray Walker were like the original dream team. And James Hunt was an absolute savage. I'll find some footage of him and put it in as well. Oh dear, the camera looks so terrible then. Why couldn't we see the whole thing? Well, unfortunately, the, the, the importance of all that was missed by shoddy camera work and bad direction. See it again and you'll see that Mansell is coming inside. He should know he's there. He's leading the race and look at this idiot. And it really is a disgrace that he's allowed to continue to interfere with Grand Prix racing. And, and uh, Jarier really is completely out of order. I mean, he really shouldn't be allowed to drive in Grand Prix racing. He is... Uh, He's got a mental age of 10 in the first place, and that was absolutely disgraceful for a driver. So the authorities have really got to look at driving like that and do something about it, because he should certainly have a short suspension for that. And uh, for being himself, he should have a permanent suspension. Well, it's a sad thing, Miami. With the greatest respect, Rebac is not a world-class driver, and uh, he's in an infinitely superior car to Carlos Reutemann, which uh, just makes a mockery of Grand Prix racing. Who says the reason I'm going so slow these days is that I'm used to turbo cars and these normally aspirated engine cars are a very different kettle of fish to drive, he says. And all I can say to that is bullshit. So, anyway... 
So yeah, Ted Kravitz, I like him, but he is a weirdo. But to be honest, I'll take anybody other than the Grand Prix killer. Now that we have pedal cams, isn't it about time we got a female F1 driver? For God's sake. That, you, what is wrong with you? See, the fucked up thing about that is I didn't even have to think about what you meant. I knew exactly, you mean like an upskirt? That's disgusting. Disgusting. <laughs> yeah, Women already have enough barriers to break down to get into F1 without dealing with your misogynistic comments. Excuse me. And it doesn't even make sense. Like, it's not like they'd be wearing a dress. They'd be wearing overalls like all the other drivers because you can't make a dress fireproof. Unless you were also wearing fireproof knickers and fireproof tights. But it's not worth risking burning your minge. What would need to happen for Lance Stroll to be dropped from Aston Martin while his dad is still the owner, aside from a war in Canada? Well, a war in Canada is a good start. The, the thing about Lance Stroll and his dad owning the team is... Lance Stroll is not a pay driver. Nicholas Latifi is a pay driver. Nikita Mazepin was a pay driver. Lance Stroll is what's called a made guy. Do you know what that means? A made guy? It's a mafia term. A made guy can walk into a casino in broad daylight with a machine gun and mow down a crowd of people and nobody calls the cops because he's a made guy. He's untouchable. And that is what your dad owning the team is. It's, you're a made guy. So I don't know. I think he would literally have to be involved in some Harvey Weinstein type stuff. But even then, his dad would bail him out. So your original idea, a war with Canada. Would you rather be in the car with Latifi or Princess Diana? <laughs> well, first of all, Diana wasn't driving. She was in the back with Dodi Al-Fayed. The driver... And what did I read about the driver? There was some conspiracy. The driver, a French fella, who was apparently three times over the drink drive limit. But then I have it on good authority that the driver was part of MI6. And the, the whole alcohol thing was a facade. In fact, I'm going to look it up right now. I don't want to spread misinformation. Hold on a minute. I swear down on me nuns. Six conspiracy theories about the death of Princess Diana de Bonk, blah, blah, blah. Diana pregnant and Dodie was about to propose. The driver was part of the conspiracy. So the driver is called Henry. Suspicious funds in Henry's bank account, along with the testimony from Richard Tomlinson, a former MI6 officer, suggested that Henry was on MI6's payroll. As for the alcohol level in Henry's blood, conspiracy theories have suggested the sample was taken from a suicide victim, not Henry. And... They believe Henry was sober that night. You see, I talk a lot of shite, but I get the important stuff correct, and that matters. So the driver, what was the what was the fucking question? Would you rather be in a car with Latifi or Princess? Well, I would choose Latifi because Latifi is just a goofball, and I don't want to get mixed up in some MI6 shite. Right, we'll do one more before we all go back to our miserable lives. What's more sad, the Queen's death or Vettel's retirement? Oh, the Queen's death. Are we all okay? It's been a few weeks now. Have we all calmed down? I, personally, am still devastated. I didn't queue up like one of those morons. David Beckham queued up. 13 hours. That's how long people were standing in the pissing down rain just to walk past a box with a dead lizard in it. Did you really think the Queen was in that box? Come on, did... did did you really think they would just leave Her Majesty's corpse out in the open like that? Grow up. So, what was in the box? I think it was Michael Massey. Even though I was going to say it was Michael Massey, but he was just spotted at the, uh, was it the ba Bathurst 1000? So he is alive and well. That's nice to hear. And what was the thing with uh, Philip Schofield and Holly Willabooby? They pushed into the line because they were part of the press. And then there was like a massive backlash. Somebody started a petition to get them thrown off this morning. Somebody started a petition to get you deplatformed because you pushed into a queue to see the Queen's coffin. Might just be the most British thing ever. You see, all you Americans, this is why you need to get yourself a royal family. They're a good fucking laugh.
Did you watch the funeral? That was a good laugh. Bloody Meghan Markle showed up to the funeral. The absolute nerve. Mate, that slob who stole Harry away from the family, ran away to America, did a rate salacious interview with Oprah Winfrey, who isn't even relevant anymore, saying, oh, the royal family's racist. They were asking me what colour the baby's going to be. That's a perfectly reasonable question. That's a per... Uh, have we ever seen the baby? I've never seen the baby. Have you seen the baby? Ha have you have you seen the baby? No, of course you haven't. Because the baby does not exist. Well, I think that's a good place to end. So uh oh, just a bit of uh, just a bit of housekeeping before we all go back to our miserable lives. If you've noticed the uh the Ferrari cucumbers video has disappeared. I I got in a bit of hot water over that one because of the part where I edited Nicholas Latifi flying a hot air balloon into the World Trade Center. I, apparently, I violated a few community guidelines. They're just trying to cover up what we already know, which is Nicholas Latifi does not melt steel girders. So either way, I will fix that and I will re-upload it probably today or tomorrow. And then the original version will be on Patreon for the people that really need to see that. And this video is probably going to come out after the Japanese Grand Prix. In fact, it definitely will because it's lights out at six o'clock in the bloody morning. So actually, you lot could be watching this on Sunday and Max Verstappen could be a two-time world champion. Or you could be watching it on Monday after the FIA released the documents and Max Verstappen could be a zero-time world champion and we could all be in an Armageddon from which we will never escape. But let's remember what's important in any of this, which is Meghan Markle is a slob, we've never seen the baby, and Nicholas Latifi does not melt steel. Open your eyes and goodbye. Disgusting!